Hey everybody, this is Rex Bear with Leak Project. I hope you're having a nice day wherever you're at. And this presentation, we actually had Nancy Leader with us. She came on via Skype. We did a video presentation. And after about the 25 minute mark, the audio started getting so ear piercing bad that we had to reconnect. And when we got back to the interview, it was done via landline. <laughs> And then we got disconnected on our landline two different times. So this first part I'm gonna share with you guys is just the video section of the interview. And she breaks down a ton of information. Now when we were doing the phone call interview, when she would start getting into some pretty heated topics, I guess you could say, the phone would either disconnect or the sound would just completely go away. There was just no sound there. It was very interesting. So I don't know what it was, but you guys have tried to edit most of it out for the show. But in this 25 minute presentation here, this video presentation, Nancy breaks down coordinates. She talks about astronomers that discovered this planet X back in the 1983 time frame. So this is quite incredible. And also I want to recommend you guys, if you like the shows and if you don't like the commercials, Go to leakproject.com. Within the next 24 hours, we're going to have every single podcast available commercial free. There's going to be a link on each page of each podcast, and you can either listen to that specific podcast commercial free, or you can have access to all the podcasts, and it's pretty cool. So check it out, leakproject.com. Hope you're having a nice day, and we'll talk to you soon. Excellent. Well, I, I'm honored to speak with you. I've heard about you for years. It's it's great to finally get a chance to speak with the with the famous Nancy Leader. This is cool from Zeta Talk. I'm excited. Yeah. Well, I'm the real deal because in 1995 we came out talking. I am told by BBC and other, you know, I think it's Wikipedia credits me with that too. First relating Planet X, which was found in 1983, or there was something out there that they right. infrared. Uh, with Nibiru and saying they're one and the same. Uh, so it built on that. But basically, the big deal is that the Zetas, my my friends, the Zetas, um, gave the coordinates in the sky, X, Y positions in the sky, where to look out near Orion at various dates. They were very specific. I mean, they went umpteen past the decimal place and we had teams on three different continents. We had in the U.S., uh, in, in France, and in Africa that went looking at those coordinates and found this inbound object moving according to the Zeta coordinates. And that's the path diagram, which I have on my website, and I, and I also sent to you. Uh, it is, um, they, they pinpointed where the 1983 infrared balloon found an object and okay. it hit the Washington Post front page. And and it just as a side note, when they came out with this uh, Planet Nine announcement in January, guess where they were saying that Planet Nine folks were looking exactly where the Zetas pinpointed in 1997 when I put that path diagram up. That's how accurate these Zetas are. They're the real deal. Okay, so then they said, and then it it swung up toward the ecliptic, and then it got into a retrograde uh, motion, and then it's, it dropped down below the ecliptic to avoid the crowded particle flows, yada, yada. And, and these three teams went out in the winter of uh, uh, 2001, because Orion is only visible in the winter months from the northern hemisphere. They went out uh, and went to observatories in Vancouver, uh, in, in the U.S., um, and France, a France astronomer found it, but he was not allowed to release his images to us. Uh, the observatory said, no, 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 that's a, there's a cover-up going on. We'd have to kill you, you know. So wow. he wasn't allowed to give us the images. That's, that's the way. And also in um, Z Zaire, in South Africa. So they found it where the Zetas said it would be. Then, in uh, going into the winter of 2002, we were using infrared. A France student in France got a hold of infrared equipment. The people there didn't know what he was doing. He was just a student. Well, he was looking at our coordinates and made images and slipped them all to us. Then again, we went over to um, 
I, I believe it was um, CCD Images, um, you know, in out of Arizona. And there was an infrared in, uh, from a skeptic astronomer in Florida who put it up on SciAstro Amateur Usenet and said, OK, Nancy, where is it? And we fingered it. You know, the Zetas had me finger where it should be. And people looked closely. And sure enough, it was a dim star that shouldn't be, that wasn't on the star charts. So we got infrared in France and Florida. Then we moved to CCD imaging in the winter of 2002 to 2003 mm -hmm. from Arizona. And we had teams that went in every two weeks, paid their own money down, rented a scope um, near Flagstaff. And, and um, uh, we, we found it to be moving in accordance with the Zeta coordinates. Basically, in, in two weeks, it had moved from where it was before. And where it was before, there was no dim star. You know, so so, and then it became visible around uh, March, late March, two thousand three. I myself saw it in the sky, you know, in the night sky around eight thirty, and then it moved across the Earth's uh, orbit such that it was within. Then you had to ha have light pollution from the sun to see it. All that's on my website. I did a a video of my own. If you look at my uh, YouTube channel, you'll find that about um, what I just described to you with pictures. It's very well documented in many places in my website. Great. Yeah, now Zetatalk.com is a nice website. I was just looking at your YouTube channel. You've got some great videos on there as well. Um, I went to the McDonald Observatory recently here in Texas, and I tried to get ins the inside scoop. I wasn't able to get much out there. I did talk to one of the liaisons that works at the gift shop slash um, welcome center and I talked to him a little bit about Planet X. One thing that was really cool about that observatory is it's in a no-fly zone so there's no chemtrails or contrails over it and, and you look at the sun and it's just you know, it looks completely different there than when you go to a place like Phoenix, Arizona or Las Vegas from all the chemtrails that they blast into the skies. So you know and I, it's, it's funny Nancy because I am really open to the possibility of Planet X, but I'm also agnostic. I don't know. You know, I, I'm, I'm neutral, but if I had to go one way or another, I'd say there's certainly a lot of things that point to the possibility of Planet X, but I'd say there's always been a lot of things, you know? I mean, people say that volcanoes are going off now more than ever and Earth changes and stuff, and, and that's been going on for a lot of years. So that could be it, or maybe it's something else. I don't know, but it certainly is nice to talk with people like you and, and others that have done so much research into the subject. And, and with all this information that's coming out there, I mean, I could definitely see the, the possibilities. I just, I haven't seen it with my own two eyes. And even if I did, with all the Project Blue Beam stuff and everything else that's going on, it, you know, it's just, it's tough to have those filters and know what's right and what's wrong and what's real and what isn't. So it's really nice to speak with you. Now, um, I, I guess our interview's here in about 45 minutes, but um, I would like to ask you personally, I mean, what's it like uh, when, when the Zetas contact you? I mean, is it, is it just like you talking to me? Is it telepathic? I mean. Um, yeah, it's just like me talking to you, although I don't hear anything. I don't hear any noises. I don't hear a voice. I don't see anything. Um, the best I can describe it is like if you daydream or you have an idea pop into your head, you, you know, you might be um, dozing off and you say, oh, wait a minute, blah, 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 you know, an idea pops into your head. Well, I know it's not my thoughts that I'm getting, and and we, we worked on this. They they opened my head up and put a little bit of their DNA in, in my head where the telepathy center for people is, and this happened in my late 20s. And I do recall the instance. They had me walk out into the backyard, uh, you know, and, and get on a little spaceship and go through this, routine then they wanted to know did i feel nauseous that i feel, you know, did i have how were my arms and legs and you know okay no brain damage and back home with the babies uh, and after that i became we're just gonna put some dna in your cerebral cortex no big deal <laughs> have a nice day <laughs> carry so on I, <laughs> sorry I think they zapped it in there you know uh to some degree but they had my my head in a clamp to make sure they got it just the right spot you know they didn't want so after that, I noticed that I was more telepathic with people, and I would know who was calling before the phone rang, right. and I would be able, and I played with that. I was fascinated. I wasn't even consciously aware that I was a contactee at that time, 
you know, I wasn't con consciously aware until 55 years of age. I did not let myself know I was a contactee so that I could live a normal life and people wouldn't be able to say, well, you know, she's always been crazy, you know, I, right. and I, because I haven't been. Uh, so uh, at that time, I didn't know, but I was aware and I, and I played games with people. I would say, think of something I couldn't possibly know. And then within two minutes, I'd guess it, you know. Wow. And I found that I could actually go out with a different um, thought complexes and invade people's thinking doing remote viewing. I didn't know at that time what it was, but, okay, I would think of a situation, a map, an emotion, a date, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Who knows about this? And then I'd be, bing, I'd be connecting with somebody. I'd, I'd be on the same wavelength because these are brainwave wavelengths yeah. and i would be able to interrogate them and sometimes these people would know they were being probed one time i got who is this you know so wow. remote thing is real if you have telepathic ability you can do it it's a great snoop tool um so when i talk to the it, <laughs> um it is conversational but i don't hear anything in response i i get a realization Okay. And then when I do Zeta talk, I wrap English around my realization or my concepts that they that they've given me the concepts. If I were French, I would wrap French around it. You know, so it's not a language. Language is the last thing we add to our thoughts before we emit it to other people. Yeah, right. Huh. Well, that's fascinating. Okay. Do you have Rh negative blood? No, I'm not a Neanderthal. No. Okay. Not at all. I'm German. I, I, my whole, at least as far as we know, <laughs> uh, just a, a smidgen of Jewish, maybe a little French, you know, but sure. mostly German. I know several people that are lifetime contactees that, you know, multiple experiences with what they call the grays. They don't call them Zetas. Um, and they have Rh negative blood. And they have like that extra um, tailbone, some real weird anomalies with that blood type versus the, the non-RH negative. So I have seen a lot of images lately of Planet X, and some of them have been incredible, and other ones have been, they look like just, you know, straight up lens flare to me. So I recently came out with a video where somebody wanted to come on the show, and he wanted to debunk no, most of the Planet X video, or, you know, pictures. And the ones that he brought to the table, they weren't the best pictures, but he certainly was able to debunk them. And, and now, it's funny, Nancy, because I think that Planet X and Nibiru, people that are looking for the wrong things oftentimes are putting all this energy and focus in the stuff that isn't real. And I brought that to the table, and now a lot of people that I guess are just so passionate about lens flare anomalies being Planet X are looking at me like I'm a disinformation agent. I was called a, a government donkey, a federal donkey, and, and several other things from people, which I'm just like, wow, you guys, I'm a reporter. I'm trying to get to the truth. I'm bringing both sides to the table. And I've interviewed many people like Gil Brassard, Marshall Masters, and others that have specialized in Planet X. And I've talked to people like, um, uh, what was his name? Not Marshall Clark, Bill. I spoke with him as well. I spoke with a gentleman that basically tried to debunk Planet X. And so, I mean, I, I talked to both sides here, and as I said, I'm agnostic on the subject, but it certainly seems to me that there's a lot of evidence that points to the possibility of Planet X. When you read some of these ancient articles and texts like the Sumerian tablets and such, does the Zeta talk, is, does that parallel with the Sumerian tablets and many of the translations of Zachariah Sitchin and maybe Gerald Clark? Yes and no. Uh, they, don't, they don't stand behind what Sitchin has translated, but... They said the ancient Sumerians were talking about Nibiru. That is the planet. And of course, it shows up in Plato's work. That all, all kinds of, you know, the, the Aborigines, uh, you know, the um, people all over the world have talked about the Great Flood. The Chinese, our, our mythology is full of uh, talks about prior crustal shifts and the like. Hapgood talking to Einstein with the crustal shifting theory. Uh, Vilikowski coming out mapping the 3600 signature, I like to call it that. And, and there's so much evidence that every 3600 years, we have cataclysmic changes on Earth. We have uh, Vilikowski mapped how the oceans drop uh, 16 to 20 feet worldwide, 35 
or now it's 3,600 years ago. Uh, and and uh, and what about the, the the mammoths, you know, found up there in Wrangell Island, where it's just frozen solid all the time, and then they have green grass in their tummies and buttercups. Oh, uh, they were suddenly frozen, or drowned and then frozen. But the point is, green grass doesn't grow up there, and these are gigantic herbivores. So you could go on and on about the geological uh, proof that every 3,600 years we have something cataclysmic happen. Uh, there's a, a huge cover-up going on. Why, why is that the case? Well, um, the Zetas have said that in 1983, when the uh, JPL and NASA sent up the infrared balloon up above the atmosphere to get a clear view, and they looked in the direction of Orion because they were getting this information from aliens after Roswell, chatting with them. And they said that's where the direction it's coming from. So up went the balloon. And everybody prior to that, 1980 on, there was lots of articles and magazines saying, we're looking for nemesis, a, a tug out in that direction. There's a gravity pull. The outer planets perturb in that direction. Even all the ancient astronomers knew that and were documented. We're going to go see what that is. Well, uh, okay, it was fine as long as they didn't find it. But in 1983, when they found it, um, they were so shocked that the cover-up didn't clamp down fast enough and it hit the Washington Post December 31st at the bottom of the front page, mystery planet, blah, blah, blah. Maybe so close it's part of our solar system, maybe very distant and, and huge and, you know. And then they said, but we can say for sure it's not inbound. Well, if you don't know what it is, you can't say for sure. You know, so, so, so then, whammo, here comes the cover-up. And the cover-up was... Oh, never mind. There's no perturbations out there. And we it's all nonsense. We did a math error. It was a math error. Well, bull, bull crap, you know. So so anyway, why did they do the cover-up? Reagan issued uh, an executive order saying, don't talk about this object and don't talk about aliens either. You know, so that was part. And therefore, they had just it was a national security issue. People were going to panic. They were going to run screaming in the streets. You were going to refuse to go to your jobs. You weren't going to pay your mortgage. You know, all these horrible things. More people would die if they knew. Well, they know. They knew. And they weren't screaming in the streets. But, you know, they're special. And we're not. We're dummies. So now we have a gradual announcement happening. There's been a struggle about those who wanted to tell us the truth Obama reversed those executive orders, but everybody was still terrified. You know, anybody that wanted to talk about it would get assassinated or have accidents. You know, so Obama struggled since the middle of 2012, according to the Zetas, to tell us about Reagan's executive orders and now reversed. And it's here. It's arrived. Never did get there. So now we have what the Zetas call prongs, multi-pronged approach. Planet Nine. It's out there where they found this big planet in 1983, this object. Uh, exactly. Even the Zetas, when they gave their path of where people should look for it inbound, pinpointed the lower part of Orion's bow as where the, infra, the IRS team found it. And son of a gun, uh, that's where they're saying that they found Planet Nine. Well, then we get into all these exoplanets, and oh wait, Wise and Kebler and the Hubble, they're looking way too far out there, and, and it's probably right under our feet, and we didn't notice it. Guess what? The ESO uh, Observatory in Chile uh, has found all kinds of exoplanets closer in since 2010 that Wise and Hubble and uh, Kepler did not find. Oh, okay. And so we've got all these people searching, you know, the skies. And look, now they've just started to look at the Dark Energy Survey, which is an infrared survey of the skies. We'll go back a few years and look and see if there's exoplanets that are moving around. Well, I, I kind of predict that by the end of the summer, we're going to have a basic admission that never arrived, that arrived when the Zeta said, where they said, and it's parked there next to the sun, outbound now toward Earth. Uh, and uh, that's where we're going. 
and people are not running in the streets, refusing to pay their bank accounts or mortgages, you know, quitting their jobs. So we're getting there. I, I'll let you get a word in edgewise. What do you mean by it's parked next to the sun? I mean, is it actually parked there or can they move it around at will? Is this some type two civilization? No, it's not intelligently controlled. It is a planet that is uh, four to five times our diameter, the diameter of Earth, 23 times as massive. Uh, and um, it's a big magnet. It has a different composition than Earth. It's it's called a planet, but it actually has its own glow. Uh, it has It's more of a water planet than not, although it has land masses. The Anunnaki live there. And, uh, and they were transplanted to live there. They are our human equivalents, uh, more like eight foot tall rather than five, six foot tall. Um, and uh, it, 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 it emits its own light through cracks under the ocean, you know, so that it, the light bounces off the clouds around it. And so they don't really need to be close to a sun to have light and warmth. But it's, it's like, it's a type of, of planetary object that mankind does not have a definition for. And if, if you think you come under ridicule, Rex, you should see the ridicule I came under in 1995. I went on Sci Astro Amateur in 1997 to 2001 and debated uh, the astronomers and who boy, you know, uh, they don't have enough dirty names for me. Isn't it amazing how some people, whether they're right or wrong, are not willing to have a decent conversation. Now, debate can be a good thing, right? I mean, we can learn from each other oftentimes, but because you have a certain position and you've gone to school for something, well, if this person says it's true and, and I don't believe in it because I wasn't taught about it in school, well, I'm going to call that person every, you know, it's just, it's retarded the way that human beings respond to each other sometimes. It's, uh, it just blows my mind. We're in the year 2016 and we still treat each other like cavemen. And barbarians sometimes, you know, I mean, not everybody, a lot of people that listen to your show, uh, Zeta Talk, and a lot of people that listen to Leak Project are very open-minded and astute, well-educated, and looking for the truth. They're not confined in a little tiny box. It comes with the territory, as they say, and this is war, and uh, I would have to say the fan and hate mail was 50-50 in those days, and it's really, um, the nature of it has changed, uh, in part because uh, people are admitting that never was there. And you know, the visibility, it's really there. Uh, we we have a webcam in Italy and another in France that are showing Nibiru at sundown at approximately the four o'clock position of the sun. Uh, there it is, the, the pink orb with its shoulder, shoulder pads. When it came in in 2003, we had people all around the world that were looking for it. And it was in the night sky close enough they could take photos, and then it crossed over our orbit to be closer to the sun in the spring of 2003. Uh, and I saw it, you know, it was kind of like a, a, a glowing red mess that kind of faded in and out. And this was not uh, Aldebaran, that, that the reddish star to the east of Orion at all, because I could see that too. You know, and people all over the world, and people would, would take photos of it. We had people with, uh, a 10x binocular uh, cameras and the like, and and they they showed like a double helix streaming behind Nibiru because it's a moving planet. It just doesn't sit and park and have its moons go round and around. It's constantly in motion, and and therefore that that pattern developed. Well, it's got two dominant moons, and they each have their own collage of little moons. You know, and they're on either side like shoulder pads, and they, this whole thing swirls in a retrograde motion. It has a retrograde orbit coming in. It has a retrograde rotation, uh, you know, in, in relationship to the sun. And uh, the moon swirls also go in a retrograde swirl. So when you look straight on, it looks like it's got shoulder pads. And we have that in photos from 2003. I sent a couple to you, Rex. So also... Now, in this webcam from Italy, and when it's become visible, there it is with the shoulder pads. In France, another webcam off South Carolina, and recently one up in Alaska. I think it's Sedowick, uh, Alaska. There is a cam set up for pilots of small planes, and it looks almost dead north 
azimuth 344. So it's looking up over the North Pole. Well, at midnight to 2 a.m., the sun comes up and then sets at 2 a.m. And then, of course, it comes up again in the morning. But that's not the sunrise.